Germany was at war, but as a child you don't sort of take much notice. And it's only the first time I took notice was uh, we were playing, we had sort of a sand pit and so on, and uh, my friend, he got called home because his father died in the war. And that was sort of the first time I sort of associated war with pain. Then we got bombed, of course. A lot of schools got bombed, went different schools each time. We finally got really bombed. The sirens went and we always had suitcases near the door sort of thing, so we grabbed them and went down the cellar, but didn't get even quite to the cellar. We heard the, you know, the bombs going off and you could hear them coming closer. It sounded different when we got hit all together. <laughs> we tried to get out and we couldn't because of the smoke and the, the flames and so on. We went next door. They, the cellars were interconnected. Yeah, so we went next door, couldn't go out there, so we went next door and then went to one of those cellar windows and went into the street and of course the smoke, the flames, the storm, strong, very strong wind. We made our way through the cemetery because we didn't want to get too close to the houses. So, uh, you know, the churned over graves from the burns, from the bombs. And, I uh, went to the river, I was sort of the flat plains on the river, uh, went across by a ferry to the new town in Dresden and went to Meissen which is about 30 something kilometer away. My grandmother lived there. Well we were there for a while and then the Russians came of course, the artillery bombardment and, and that sort of thing. War. After the war, then my father was prisoner of war in Canada. See, I didn't know my father. You know, he's been away for eight years, and I was only nine years old or so, so I didn't know him. And he stood there and then claimed to be my father, you know, and he wanted to go in our flat. And of course, I didn't want a stranger in our flat, sort of thing. And, and he looked around the flat, and, and then he wanted to go to my grandmother. And I thought, that's a good idea. She would know. And anyway, we went to the grandmother and, you know, hugs and tears and so on. And, and then it dawned on me, maybe he is your father, you see. And then the problem started because uh, I was, if not running the show, but had a lot of influence and suddenly he told me what to do. <laughs> so, you know, it's growing up. And he always had the idea to emigrate to Canada. So uh, we escaped to the west, over the border at night. We went by train to within 30, 40 kilometers of the border and then at night walked along the railway line which we knew would go west and at daytime we slept in, in the culverts, you know, underneath where the rain washes through the railway line and slept there at, at daytime and at night we just walked again. On until we came to the border village. And then in the middle of the night, we went in the middle through the village because that was less guarded. Or maybe they thought nobody would go through the village through the border. And yeah, we heard the Russians and the German guards there and the restaurant sort of thing and, you know, singing and whatever. And we snuck along the road and across the paddock and my mother, she was, or night blind or whatever, and she ran in the cow and the damn thing started to bellow and <laughs> dogs barking. <laughs> we had pepper and salt in the pocket for the guard dogs, you know, when they sort of attack you, you throw it in their face. And well, we, we were in a bit of forest at daybreak and we weren't quite certain whether we were west or east. So we hid in the bushes, we heard voices and uh, there was a couple of policemen and they had West German uniforms. So, well, we got out of the bushes and, well, at first they were apprehensive, but then, yeah, they relaxed and they gave us their bread they had for the day. <laughs> and they showed us where the next railway station was and we went to Hamburg. Australia was advertising for skilled migrants. My father, he applied for Australia. And we heard nothing for a long time, could have been a year or more. And finally he said, oh, well, whatever comes first, we take. And Australia came in the morning mail and Canada in the afternoon. <laughs> so in Australia, here we are. 
my father came earlier, a year earlier. He wrote us what to get because there were shortage of nearly everything in Australia at the time. And so we brought a lot of tools, which I still got, still use. <laughs> I use it today. It's worn, it used to be much bigger. We landed in Melbourne, then we went to Cooma. Pretty windswept, barren, <laughs> grassy hills sort of thing. It was different, Cooma was different. It looked more like, well, the Wild West movies we've seen, you know, with the, with the verandas and, and the pups, <laughs> that sort of thing. The day after we arrived, I turned 16. And, uh, but I, I started working as a fully-fledged tradesman. There were farmers from Wanda Bairtree near Wagga, and they wanted a house built, so, well, he left the snowy. We went to Wanda Bairtree, built the house and uh, for Mr. Day in Wanda Bairtree. And then, of course, then the neighbour, Mr. Kelly and Mr. Goldworthy, and <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> Well, it was definitely a lot bigger city than, than Kuma. <laughs> a little bit more like a little bit more like a city and I had a beach and met my wife in Waka. At the bath at the Waka swimming pool. She was sitting there and we smiled and then we met at the dances and well we got married. Been married now since sixty one, now uh, yeah, forty five years. There was a lot of anti German sentiment really. Yeah, there. there was a lot of racism really in Australia. There was white Australia policy, all of that. But you got to understand, there was a war and a lot of propaganda, and then you got to understand it, you know. And, and we couldn't speak English, so actually that was good because we didn't understand what they were talking about us or to us, and, and we just wanted to work and get ahead. I'm home here now. That's, uh, Australia's my home. I'm going to die here, no trouble. My kids definitely Australian, and and my wife's Australian. I feel happy here. As I said, we, Australia gave us a big opportunity. We could work. <laughs>